a little over a month ago, I think it was about the last week in March, uh, I received a call and on the end of the, of the call, on the other end of the call, was this really panicky voice, really frustrated voice, really, uh, you know, a voice that, that was crying for help. And this is how he began. I go, hello. And, and she says, he's living, he's living, he's living. And I'm like, who's living? What are you talking about? Who, you know, I, I, I don't know who this is. You know, so I'm trying to figure out what's going on. And suddenly the phone, I think, is flung down and uh, I hear some commotion. I hear some cussing out. I hear some quarreling, intense quarreling. And eventually uh, the person picks up the call and hangs up. Guys, this is how this pandemic season begun for me. Hi, my name is Emmanuel Geshanja and I am the founder of iVow, an organization uh, that, that fights for the sanctity of marriage by equipping couples with tools uh, to, to have strong, healthy, thriving and lasting marriages. I also am a pastor at Mavuno Church and today we're going to be talking about conflict resolution in this COVID-19 uh, season. We all came into this year, 2020, uh, with so many hopes, so many dreams. A lot of people were excited. There was a lot of people who were saying, this is a new decade. And guys were super excited, new things. Uh, and then February happens to us. And then in February, uh, finally, the WHO, you know, after monitoring what's happening in China, uh, tells us, you know, or declares this disease or pandemic that's happening a worldwide pandemic. And then now begins the new stories of the deaths that are happening, of the infections that are happening. We hear about Italy, we hear about uh, France, we hear about the UK, we hear about the US. And then finally it comes to Africa and everybody is in a panic. They begin shutting down things. And now we're all, all that we're reduced to is staying and sheltering in our homes. And we do not know what to do. This is a new dispensation, a new era, where a lot of us, you know, um, who were used to going to work, uh, in, you know, when we had employment, um, now we're stuck in our homes. For some of us who were lucky, uh, we are now working from home. Uh, for some of us, our businesses uh, began to shut down slowly because there's not that many people trading. Everybody has gone into survival mode. And here we are, cooped up in our homes, uh, trying to figure this thing out. Uh, no money, uh, finances are dwindling uh, because some, some empl employers are reducing salaries. Uh, some are straight up just laying off people. Um, so we do not know what to do. And so we're in our homes uh, with our spouses and we are struggling and, and wondering what we need to do. It is in seasons like this where there is pressure that we typically will either thrive or buckle under the pressure. And unfortunately, we are seeing so many couples buckling under the pressure of this COVID-19. Whether it's because of things that they have faced in their past, or issues they have had in their past, and now because they're together, uh, they, they have to face these issues. Or whether it is there were things in their marriage that they held higher than the relationship, and now you have to be in this place where you are united in order to survive. And there's a lot of fights and wrangles. Uh, people are fighting. We are hear, we're hearing stories of so much gender-based violence. Uh, and it's not just one way where men are beating women. It's some women who are going crazy, uh, getting knives and running after their men. Um, I'm getting so many calls of people separating in this issue. And there's a lot of people who are concerned at the state of the marriage uh, in, in our world today as this pandemic uh, season uh, continues and we are sheltering at home, stuck with our spouses. You see, before this season, we could avoid each other. I could go to work, 
I could come back late uh, and I could come just in time to have dinner, one or two conversations, and I'm in bed. But now, when I wake up, you're seeing me. When I have breakfast, we see each other. If you're working and I'm on my laptop, I'm right there. If you're on a Zoom call, right there. Very irritating. This guy who has not done this, this lady who has not done this, and, and we're so much in each other's space. And the things that were issues in our marriage are now under the magnifying glass and are being uh, made to look bigger than they really were. The truth is, guys, uh, we, our origin and, and, and who we are, we are all, uh, we have been exposed to different things from the time we were children. And, and, and if we did not, in the beginning of our marriage, uh, set you know, the right foundation, if we did not come together to do the right thing, uh, or rather to align ourselves so that we understand that we're doing this united, then during this season, that is obviously going to come out. So what then can we do as couples in order, to, in order for us to be able to overcome this season? What can you do? Allow me to share with you uh, a couple of things that I think that we can apply to our relationships, a couple of things that we can apply to our marriages so that we can be successful in this uh, season, uh, so that we can even manage the conflict uh, in a manner uh, that's befitting uh, and a manner that helps us solve the issues rather than fight and break apart. Mark in chapter three, uh, verse 25 says that, if a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And this is so true that if you're not united in the home, chances are you will break up, chances are you are going to split, chances are after this season you will be filing for a divorce or filing for separation or just straight up just run away. Uh, uh, but, but here Mark is saying that it's important for you to consider unity as a couple so that your home can stand. Now, what can we do to ensure that we have uh, unity within the home so that our home can stand and uh, so that we do not fall uh, in our homes? Allow me to share with you two uh, major solutions that I believe or I have learned uh, over the, you know, over this course studying about marriages and even over my marriage that will help us to, to overcome this season. Uh, the first, the, 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 the two things are creating the we boundaries and creating the me boundaries. Now the we boundaries are boundaries where we as a couple sit down and come together to agree about something uh, so that this this, 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 this is going to be the constitution. This is going to be the blueprint. This is going to be what is going to govern our relationship. So here are the we boundaries. The first one is we will never mention divorce. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, in our day and age, it has been made an option that we can divorce. So we find a lot of people knowing that there's a back door uh, into our relationship. So we do not really have to work on it. After all, you can go your way, I can go my way, and uh, I can find someone else uh, because, hey, it ain't that serious. First boundary we need to set is we will never mention divorce. Divorce should not be an option. And when that back door is closed, then that means if you run to the back door, you have to turn back and face this person. That means you have to decide to choose to work on your relationship. The second one is, we will not bring up old and related stuff. Yo, <laughs> uh, have you ever been in a conversation or an argument and uh, we were talking about uh, how to discipline the children 
and uh, suddenly in the middle you know this has become so heated and then you're reminded of that day you didn't pick me up uh, you forgot about me what was that about you don't even you don't even uh, clean the dishes like we'd like for it you know you leave them to uh, overnight uh, you leave your clothes lying and you're just like whoa 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 wait a minute we were having a conversation about disciplining the children where did all this other stuff come guys it's important to keep the main thing the main thing, all right? The, th the third one is, we will never fight in public or in front of the children. What this means is that, one, if you fight in public, one, if you fight in front of the children, uh, what that does is uh, you are damaging your partner's image. Uh, the other thing is that one partner might be the kind who wants to show off <laughs> uh, that they are the prowess, you know, they, they have the prowess to fight and put you down. Uh, but the other one might not be vulnerable enough to share what they really feel about the situation. So it becomes a real huge fighting match. So it's important that you go behind closed doors, find a safe space and begin to have this conversation. All right. The next one is a timeout is an option when the conflict gets to a damaging level. Guys, the truth is, um, you're not always gentle. You're not always kind. Uh, the truth is, uh, someone will say something that will just be, uh, you know, make you flip off the handle and you really can't control yourself in that moment. And you just in a place of rage and you just want to let them know exactly how you feel about them and about what they said and about what they do. Guys, when it gets to this level, it really means that this conversation is just going to go downhill and downhill and downhill. And chances are you're going to hurt each other. So it is important for us, it is important for you uh, that when you see it getting to this level, that you as a couple will just re recognize that, you know, hey, uh, there is an issue um, and, and, and we're not going to resolve it in this, uh, in this state and we need to take a time out uh, and say we are going to revisit this another time after we have cooled off. So guys, it's okay to take a time out uh, even though the situation has not been resolved uh, just so that you can resolve it when you have clearer heads and when you have calmer heads. The next one is we will not get physical with each other. Guys, this is a big one, especially for men. Uh, men, uh, I know that um, we're not as emotionally strong as a woman is. Uh, and a woman uh, can take a, a, a huge emotional load. Uh, in fact, that's why in arguments, you know, women uh, sometimes tend to have the upper hand. And uh, men result to using the strength that they have, which is physical strength, in order to get back the power uh, whenever there are arguments. So it is important, uh, it's important for us to, uh, not, to, to understand that we put a boundary, that when we know it's getting to this point, then we need to stop this conversation so that you end up not laying a finger uh, or a hand on your spouse. Um, but this goes also to the women. Uh, sometimes it's important for you to know that, uh, it's, it's, sometimes it's, it's actually very important for you to know this because what this does is when you see that they are struggling, it's important for you to take a time out so that you can get uh, the desired outcome in your conversation, in your argument, in your conflict. Uh, so yeah, guys, uh, please note this and help each other. The idea is that we are working together to, uh, to make this work or to find a solution for this uh, problem. Uh, so, so your partner is not the issue, your partner is not the problem. What we are doing is working together to, 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 to solve these problems that, you know, we have in our relationship so that we can have a much richer and a more thriving uh, relationship. All right, the next one is we will not go to bed angry. <laughs> uh, even, the, if, even if the argument is not resolved, 
uh, I think it's important for us to just create a space where, okay, time out, I'm upset, uh, you're upset, uh, but we can kiss and make up um, <laughs> for now, and we can have the, continue this argument uh, later. So it's important for us not to go to bed angry. It's important for us to still enjoy, embrace, and warmth uh, in the bed uh, uh, with each other. After all, the Bible does tell us, do not go to bed angry. Uh, so yeah, uh, the next one is failure is not an option. <sighs> Guys, I think this is a very important, uh, important one. When you decide that we're creating this boundary that failure is not an option, then what this means is that we will do whatever it takes to resolve the issue. If it means that I will concede, if it means that I will compromise, if it means that I will give in for the sake or for the good of the greater relationship, then I will do that. If it means that I will take your side or do whatever it is, I mean, guys, do whatever it takes to ensure that you are succeeding in your relationship. All right, and now we go to the me boundaries. Two is the me boundaries. Now the me boundaries are things that are personal, that I can do as a person, that you can do as a person uh, to help your relationship, especially in a time of conflict. Number one is listen, listen, listen. I'll repeat, listen, listen, listen. James says in one, uh, chapter one, verse 19, he says, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Guys, what I'm hearing from this is a lot of stuff. One thing I've realized about our human nature is when somebody is talking to us and sharing something about us, especially if it's in a bad light, uh, our tendency is to be uh, to defend ourselves, uh, to justify our actions, and often, more often than not, we're not hearing the right thing that is being, is being communicated to us. So we are hearing to respond, we are hearing to uh, defend, and we are hearing to justify, as opposed to listening to understand what is being told to us. If a lot, if you know, if, if a majority of us took this stance of listening to understand uh, what is being said, uh, what the issue is, uh, what the root cause of all you know this conflict that we are uh, going through is, um, chances are we would uh, change a lot of things and we would have stronger and healthier marriages uh, because of that. The second thing about of me boundaries is get to a point where you say, what part or what was my role in this situation that made you feel this way? Um, listen to what Matthew says. Uh, Matthew says in chapter seven, verse three, that uh, why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? Yo. Yo, that's powerful, but that is so real. Listen, we all are like this. I know in my relationship, I'm like this. The moment my wife wants to shed light on a struggle that I have, um, I am very quick to point out things that she did so that we are even or I make her look worse than I am. It's a natural human tendency seeing spec, problem, issues with them, but not noticing or, or highlighting my own or taking responsibility, that's a big one, taking responsibility for my, my part, my role in creating this conflict. A lot of us need to begin to, you know, take a step back and begin to see what part did I play uh, in bringing uh, this bringing about this conflict. Listen guys, the day I began doing that, um, I began to understand 
uh, my wife a lot. Uh, because one, I began listening to what she is saying because there were times I remember she would say the same thing over and over and over again until one day I was just like, you know, I've had this for so long. So I, I, I decided, okay, I'm going to start asking you questions. So, so what about what I said made you feel, you know, the way you feel? And she began to explain, she began to explain. Let me tell you, I feel like that was the first time she truly felt hard in our relationship. Uh, and she truly felt like I understood what was being said. Uh, it was when uh, I began to listen and understand what she's saying, but also ask, what was my role in it? And I realized sometimes it's not that I was not speaking a truth, it's not that I was not saying the right thing, um, it's, it's what we're going to talk about in the next, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's just probably the way I said it or, or, or how I said it to her that made the difference on, you know, of how she felt about the situation. And when I learned that, then it was easier for me to begin to rectify so that I avoid or we avoid getting into that particular conflict. And the last one which I've alluded to is it's not what you say, it's how you say it that matters. Let us learn how to complain and not to criticize. Um, Proverbs 15:1 says, a gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. In Mavuno, we are going through a Proverbs uh, ch uh, challenge. Uh, this is one of the Proverbs of uh, 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 King Solomon. And uh, basically what King Solomon is saying here is be gentle with your tongue. Uh, do not uh, raise your tongue. Do not constantly come with anger uh, because what those harsh words do is they bring about wrath. They stir up to anger and bring about, uh, you know, wrath. Guys, it's not what you say. It's how you say it that matters. All right. Let me give you a, a scenario uh, and explain to you what I mean by do not complain. I mean complain, but don't criticize. Complaining is like walking up to your spouse and, and saying, hey, babe, can we talk? And she says, yeah, yeah. Um, and you say, hey, babe, I just wanted to share with you that, you know, when you say this, remember that time you said this? Uh, or that time you did this? Oh, babe, that made me feel this way. I felt undermined, I felt demeaned, I felt disrespected, I just felt not considered. Uh, and you can use all these words. And guys, let me tell you, uh, that will be received way better than if you came and said, you always, you never. You know the way you like to say it? Yeah, I just criticized you. <laughs> uh, but yeah, when we criticize each other, then what happens is we raise our fences, we raise our defenses, and some uh, who are runners will run, uh, but the ones who are fighters will now come back fighting at you. And that's what criticism is. Uh, so, so instead of criticism, take a complaining uh, stance uh, and understand it's what you say. It. How can you say whatever it is uh, to uh, your spouse so that they are able to receive it um, and say, oh, okay, I am sorry, I did not realize that. Um, and yeah, and these are just some of the things that I wanted to share with you, even during this season. Um, it is my hope that even as we've gone through everything, that uh, you will get these points, note them down, and sit down as a couple and just have a conversation about it and create these boundaries and say, hey, this is the constitution. These are the boundaries that are going to govern our home from this day on. And this is not for you who's just in conflict. This goes for every single person who's out there. Um, in doing this, you ensure that um, you will uh, be having the right conversations and working towards a solution rather than just tearing each other down uh, and creating the division within your marriage. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, my prayer is that even as you've listened to this, that your hearts will, you know, uh, 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 begin to work on this and will desire this word and that you'll desire it for your marriage and that you 
uh, will employ this in your marriage, you will apply this in your marriage and begin to see change and transformation in your marriage. Allow me to pray for you uh, even as we close. Uh, and even in this prayer, um, I just want to pray that uh, God will give you the strength uh, God will give you the grace, the mercy. God will give you the heart of forgiveness. And God will give you the heart to desire, to sit down and create these boundaries in your relationship uh, so that you might have strong and thriving relationship. Father in heaven, I thank you for each one who's listened to this, um, uh, this, uh, this uh, word for today. And I pray, Lord, that each one, oh God, will uh, become doers of this word, that they will take this word, which are your precepts, oh God, is what you desire for relationships. And that, Lord, as they take this word, that, Father, they will apply it in their lives and, and enjoy strong, thriving, uh, lasting, and healthy marriages. Uh, so Lord, I thank you. May your spirit be with each other and empower them, Lord, uh, to be what you desire for them in life. Amen. Thank you guys for tuning in and we'll see you next time uh, on the Mavuno channel.